I want to get louder about gun control. I want to get louder about the role of women in media. I want to get loud about mentorship. I want to get louder about following my passions and following my dreams and not getting stuck. We're getting louder. Indeed, these women are lifting their voices about conditions in today's world and the need to address tough issues. Amy King, editor-in-chief of The Lily, is here to tell us what her newspaper is doing to empower and celebrate women. Welcome to Great Day. This is Hi. so Welcome. exciting. Hi, great. Thanks for having me. So The Lily started a long time ago, and you guys at The Washington Post have reinvented it now digitally. What is the history of The Lily? Yeah, so The Lily was the first U.S. paper edited by and for women. It started in 1849 by a woman named Amelia Bloomer, and they advocated for a woman's right to vote, they fought to end slavery, they fought for women to be able to wear pants, and their mission just really resonated with us, so we decided to name our publication after it. And speaking of 1849 and thinking of that time, women of privilege really had a voice, and they were the ones driving publications sure. like this. How inclusive is the Lily today? Yeah, so our mission statement is to empower with news and information and to promote inclusivity by exposing diverse voices and perspectives. So it's definitely a huge part of our, our mission to, to bring as many voices as we can uh, to the surface. And you guys kind of call yourselves Team Lily. We do, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Thanks. Does the lily have a, a, another meaning? Not just, you know, you, I know you're naming it in honor of the, the previous publication, but. Yeah, I mean, I think when we were naming it, a, a lot of the names, you know, didn't really have any, any great meaning behind it. So what we really loved was that at least this one had a history to it. Um, mm, some yeah. substance. Speaking of substance, your, your front page this morning is, is so diverse. You tackle the NFL and how yeah, they treat cheerleaders. cheerleaders versus players. There, there's a dad who talks about male privilege. Right. How do you choose your stories and what seems to do the best? Yeah, I mean, again, we just really want to share different voices. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, we work with a whole range of freelancers from around the world and the country and we really just want to make sure we're telling different kinds of stories that aren't being told in other publications. You guys recently created a mural. Yes, we did. What, what, is the, what was the point or uh, reason behind the mural? Yeah, so we wanted to celebrate Women's History Month and our mural says we are getting louder on it and we were really inspired by the women who have been speaking up lately and speaking out and we wanted to celebrate them but also to you know remind other women who maybe haven't spoken up that there's a place for them to speak as well. So yeah, we're really hoping people will go out, take a photo with the mural and, and tell us what they're getting loud Where about. Where is the mural? It's at Union Market. Okay, yeah. Union Market. Usually when you uh, speak of women and being loud, it's not in a positive way, but you're really redefining that, and I think it's okay to let your voice be heard, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and you know, there are different ways to get loud, too. It doesn't have to be screaming into the world. It could be telling a friend or, or something like that. Texting in all caps. That's maybe. right. <laughs> so you have yes. this initiative. It's called 31 Days, 31 First for Women's History Month. Yeah, so you can find find us um, with the hashtag 31 Days, 31 First on Instagram and Twitter. And we chose a different women, woman for every day of the month of March who was the first of something. So we have Phyllis Wheatley, who was the first published African-American poet. We have Rihanna, who was the first woman to win Shoe of the Year. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there are a lot of great- Really eclectic. Yeah, a great group of women. Now, there, of course, March was Women's History Month, and we love celebrating, but of course, we don't want to contain it to just one yeah. month. So how else can people in the D.C. area go out, celebrate women's history? Yeah, so there's a museum called the National Museum of Women and the Arts, and they have a great exhibit right now called Women House, and it uh, looks at the, the relationship between women in the home. And mm -hmm. it, ha it features 36 women from across the globe. And it's a really beautiful museum and, and a great exhibit. Yeah, you just went and saw it, right? Yeah, I got to go earlier this week. It, it's, it's really great. When women are reading your publication, uh, are, are women making those bottom line executive decisions as to what goes in and what goes out? Because in media, it's very male dominated. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we are a team of seven women, so we are making all of the calls. It's, it's wonderful. I love it. So uh, <laughs> the great thing, and I want our viewers to know, is this is a publication online and it's free. Yes, it's free. Where, how, where can people find it? How can they get more yeah, info? Yeah, so we have the lily.com, the website. We also have a newsletter, which is one of my favorite things that we do. It comes twice a week and we highlight different women. And we work also with a lot of female illustrators and photographers. So our, all, of, all of the things we do are very visually driven. 
Um, you can also check us out on our Instagram. It's The Lily News. And again, it's just a very visual feed, but it will also keep you up to date on the news. Well, Amy King, thank you so much. Thank if you, you ever want to do an offshoot with this whole loud <laughs> thing, I'm thinking the screaming Lily. Yeah, you, know? you should go. You should go and, and do that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll find the time. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back after this.